Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar from the latest UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is going to continue to be cold over the coming days with chilly easterly winds continuing. There is going to be a bit of a strain off the Atlantic so there could be some weather fronts pushing in at times. At the moment we're not expecting a major risk of any snow but there is a risk there and we'll look at that when we go through the UKV precipitation charts. September Temperatures are still continuing to be below average and we do get quite a bit of uncertainty towards the end of that five day period and that all leads into the longer range picture. Now as many of you have been knowing over the past week or so there has been a strong signal from the models for cold or even very cold conditions to be pulling in from the east. This easterly flow we've got at the moment could just be the appetizer to the main event into the second half or at least the middle of February. Now, one thing that's guaranteed from all runs is very cold air will migrate into northern and central Europe. But what they've been really struggling with over the past few days, especially, is whether we see that migrate further northwards and westwards. Will it reach the British Isles? Now, as you saw in yesterday's video, there was a lot of pessimism from the, model, from the models yesterday. And unfortunately, if you are looking forward to cold weather, that has continued into today with the majority of runs having us mixing between cold and mild air masses with that sort of battle right over our shores. There is a few exceptions. There are some isolated runs like the ECMWF midday run today that does get that exceptionally cold air in from the east um, come that sort of day 7 to day 10 time frame. But it is an exception. It still shows you that it is in the model output but instead of having a 60-70% chance which I thought a few days ago it went down to kind of 20 or 30 yesterday probably down to more like 10 or 20% chance today. But there still is a glimmer of hope for that, uh, as we we'll see from the latest season. But the majority have southwesterly winds coming up against that big block. Heavy snow across perhaps parts of northern Europe. But the majority of them, as I said, will have us kind of oscillating between chilly and milder sectors. Probably still quite cold at the surface, as we don't ever see the Atlantic fully unlock until perhaps into the last week of February. Uh, but no very cold and snowy conditions from the majority of runs. But I said things could still change like we're seeing on the East in WF. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, do continue to see those easterly winds over the coming hours. And you can see at the moment, we do have a bit of precipitation coming in off the North Sea with a bit of mixing of rain, sleet and snow across parts of North England, but nothing too major. There is a weather front coming in from the west, and this is the Atlantic coming up against the block, which is transitioning north, which is allowing low pressure to just nudge in for a small period of time. This is not the Atlantic unlocking like some of the runs like the GFS have. Uh, that would be kind of the middle of next week. Um, but what we are seeing is a bit of a strain as that high pressure signal um, does wane over us, but it does transition that energy further north as we see that block develop towards Scandinavia, up towards Iceland and Greece and attempting to pull that very cold easterly in. But as I said, a lot of runs do cut it off before that very cold air does get to our shores. Now, over the coming hours, it's going to continue to be very cold overnight. Temperatures will drop away further tonight with some clearest patches developing. You see already temperatures are down towards the lower single digits. Not expecting anything too major in terms of cold weather tonight. But in the next few days, we will see clearer skies. With that Atlantic influence, there will be drier air masses moving through cutting off that drizzly, murky easterly we've had, and it will allow clearer skies, and yes, yeah, slightly milder air masses will move in, but actually at the surface it'll get even colder, because we'll have those clear skies, uh, allowing those temperatures to really fall away overnight. So it's still chilly at the moment, but nothing too exceptionally cold. You can see out to the northeast though, it's not too cold across Scandinavia yet, still some purples and pinks developing, but that will become a lot more widespread. It's exceptionally cold air all the way from the Arctic, is now slowly heading southwards and will be across much of mainland Europe come early next week. But the uncertainty is, will it get much further westwards than Denmark and Germany, maybe Netherlands, Belgium, parts of France? As I said, some runs like the Eastern Earth even get it in for the UK. Uh, and we'll show you that in a few moments' time. It is such a huge temperature contrast to our east. It is unbelievable. And if we do miss out on all that colder weather, it will be very much one of those where it promised so much and almost delivered, but not quite. 
Now, if you go over to the latest UK V, you can see the precipitation nudging in from the southwest as we head into Wednesday. Nothing too major. Again, coming up against higher pressure, it does lose its intensity, but still continue to show a bit of precipitation nudging in. Still have a bit of an easterly flow, but as I said, a bit more in the way of sunshine, perhaps, into Thursday. And there we could see potentially some frost developing. Weather front's having a bit more success there through Friday. Again, snow on the leading edge and over some higher ground, but for most still probably being cold rain. Now into Saturday, you can see we are seeing that weather front clear through. Still chilly, still cold, temperatures mid-single digits at best. But we are seeing the wind veer to more of a southwesterly, at least initially. And then as we head into Sunday again, this uh, weather front really slowly progressing in as it starts to come up against that very cold air. And this is basically setting the conditions for the huge battleground. Pretty much where this weather front is sat is a division between Atlantic air and exceptionally cold Arctic air. And you can see that exactly here. Minus 10 ice firm just up to the top right of the corner. That is very cold. Widespread snow uh, possibilities with that. Four, five degrees to the southwest. So the difference between potentially spring-like conditions proper midwinter conditions in the span of this single image. And you can see we're pretty much trapped in the middle. The majority have that minus eight, minus 10 air just retreating towards the North Sea, towards Scandinavia, Denmark, Germany. But as I said, a few do keep it pushing in like the latest ECMW, where it does struggle initially against these mild rare masses, but eventually does fully push in. You can see it exemplified here on the dew points, widely below freezing out to the North Sea, potentially 10 degrees out to our southwest. Now, do look at the two meter temperatures over the coming days. Overnight tonight, temperatures low single digits, potential for a frost, but not expecting anything too major. Uh, as we head into Wednesday afternoon, still chilly, low single digits, maybe five, six, or an isolated seven somewhere. And then as we progress into Thursday, another colder morning there uh, with more of a widespread frost with those clearer skies. And again, it's the afternoon, not, not much above low single digits, maybe five or six. Into Friday, a widespread frost into the morning with clearer skies. And then it's the afternoon afternoon really struggling with that cloud and bits of bobs of rain moving in it will really hold those temperatures down at the surface low single digits but as i said a low risk of snow because those dew points still are simply a little bit too mild as we progress into saturday still frost potentially in the morning in the further north and eastwards and into saturday afternoon double digits in the southwest showing you what the milder air could do to the second half of february but still cold or even very cold across parts of northern and northeastern england around freezing there during the afternoon elsewhere though most people around the mid single digits and then finally into sunday still got this battle by the afternoon four five degrees across much of eastern england south and southern and western england 12 degrees perhaps so you can already see by the end of the weekend the huge battle around setting up and this is why we've got such big headaches about what the outcome could be because again, a few hundred miles, maybe even a thousand mile shift in the position of these air masses could be the difference between exceptionally cold, wintry conditions and early spring-like conditions. Uh, and this is why we see the models keep flipping around, keep changing their minds, because they're not, on the grand scheme, changing their minds that much synoptically, but it does have such a drastic impact on the air mass that it changes everything at the surface. Now, if you look at the latest GFS, uh, GFS is pretty much on board with a milder, milder solution now. Um, still got some cold weather within it, but nothing crazy. You see the high pressure ridging northwards, allowing the weather fronts to push in off the Atlantic. But eventually, we try to pull in easterly winds, but the Atlantic low is too strong. So we do have this very cold block out to our northeast, but already the southwesterlies are pushing in, nudging it away in that very cold air, actually retreats more towards Eastern Europe. So GFS very mild today, uh, and you can see perhaps even spring-like conditions with more of a southwesterly, and then it does start to go very unsettled into the last week of February, as we do oscillate between big low pressure systems and more of a traditional Atlantic westerly. So GFS breaking down that block very quickly into next week. You can see it attempts it, but very quickly it subsides by sort of the middle to end of the week. No block at all exists towards our north. Still on the other side of the northern hemisphere, but not on the Atlantic side. Uh, and that means that we just go very unsettled and probably would turn pretty stormy as it forces all of these low pressure systems towards the North Atlantic. 
Now, if we do transition over to the GM, it's very similar to the GFS, in fact, where it does have a go at those East Sleeves, but the Atlantic Low is too strong. It does hold off for perhaps a little bit longer with the higher pressure, drawing more of a southeasterly, with that block holding for much of next week, and still there towards Scandinavia at day 10. But you can see the wind direction is more of a southwest either. Exceptionally cold air is across much of Europe, stretching just about into Germany, Denmark, all of Scandinavia, and much of eastern and southeastern Europe. Would be in the absolute freezer. Temperatures well below freezing for the UK, though, potentially into the double digits. So huge, huge contrast there. And we can see that a little bit more strictly here. Look at that midday on Friday in 10 days' time across much of Central Europe, minus 3 to minus 8 for France, the UK, into high single digits, maybe even double digits, and 16, 17 degrees across southern France. Huge, huge contrast in those air masses between 15 to 20 degree changes there. Um, yeah, massive, massive contrast. A bit more in the way of maintaining that high pressure, a bit closer to the ECM low effort solution, but it is, at the same time, not very cold, blocked and wintry. Now to finish by looking at the latest ECM WF, this has just come out, but it is cold as I said this evening. We do see that high pressure ridge in Orford, and initially we do have that southerly or even southwesterly pushing in and it does go mild for a short period of time, perhaps later on through the weekend the start of next week. Already deviating a little bit from the UK V here which still has those cold rare masses in play by Sunday. But watch what happens. That block never goes away. The minus 5, minus 10 isotherm is still very close by. And then come middle to later next week, the easterly winds arrive. And look at this, an exceptionally cold air mass starts drifting in from the east. And from the looks of this, we would be seeing wintry conditions, snow risk as well. With the minus 13 degrees, they're exceptionally cold conditions by day probably not getting much above one two three degrees and overnight well below freezing minus five minus ten a real possibility so it just shows you you can see though we're still only a thousand miles away from seeing those uh, spring-like conditions it's just everything shifted westwards that block's stronger and that easterly wind is flooding in off the near continent now if you finish by looking at the ensembles you can see why the majority are going for that milder solution. You can see at the moment most are around average or a few degrees above average. Not too many going for the big Atlantic spring-like southwesterly, but most have got average kind of air masses, maybe slightly above average there into the second half of February. But there's still five to ten, perhaps as I said a third to a quarter, that still have very cold outlook. And some have got a very, very cold outlook down towards the minus 12, minus 14 level. Now, again, we have definitely seen quite a big uptick here on the ensemble temperatures, but we can't ignore them, especially the latest operational ECM DF is going back towards that colder solution. I do think it's a wobble in the ECM DF and that actually we will see this more middle ground scenario where it's not very cold, but it's not very mild. It's kind of chilly, especially further eastwards and milder further south and westwards. I do think that's probably the most likely scenario but you never know. It's probably about time the colder solution just suddenly springs out of nowhere. Normally, it's the other way around. It looks very cold until shortly before any cold weather arrives. And suddenly the milder air arrives. And suddenly the block breaks down. Suddenly the Atlantic powers up. For once, could we see something a little bit different? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But East and Earth definitely suggesting that block is holding its strength as we head into the latter parts of February. Now look at the two meters temperatures, they're not that mild, especially next week. They do take a real long time to warm up, only getting towards the double digits into the final week or so of February. And that's because even with that slightly milder air pushing in, it's coming in from the southeast or southerly, which is coming off the near continent still. So it is still dry, cold air. Uh, and at the surface, we'd still probably see a lot of murk. We probably would still see chilly days and potentially chilly nights, but probably not too much of a diurnal range. It'll be kind of like six or seven by day and three or four by night. Um, so not cold conditions at all, but it wouldn't be that very big upwards tick in milder conditions that you'd hope to see. It wouldn't be as dramatic as some of those temperature charts were showing. And you see that here from the ensembles, slow uptick. It's a good week to get from those four, five, six degrees up towards the nine or ten since that final week of February. 
Now, to finish by looking at the latest ensemble season, if the midday round hasn't fully come out, unfortunately, but it'd be very interesting to see how much support that ECM the UF run does have. But you can see generally a very similar, most are average to slightly above average. The operation one was a very mild run this morning, five, six degrees it got up to around the 19th of February. But again, five to 10 very cold runs still there. And the ECM the UF operational run is one of those this evening. But again, it would be very interesting to see how much support it does have. For once, could the Eastern WF, with its colder solution, be right? Could we see, finally, against the odds, a colder pattern taking off? As I said, it always happens the other way around. We're always 70-80% sure a colder pattern will occur, and then it doesn't. But could it be the opposite way around this time? But we'll have to wait and see. As I said, East of the Earth definitely suggesting it. There are a few other runs suggesting it. But as I said, about a 60-70% chance we do some, see something milder and more Atlantic-driven as that block does lose its strength. That's what, as I said, 60-70% are showing. But as I said, there still is a decent chunk that are at least chilly. And some are cold or very cold, like that East of the Earth run. And I'll keep you updated over the coming days, but I do think we are getting to the point now where we are starting to get some agreement. Hopefully, these details do get ironed out tomorrow. But to be honest, I'll just laugh if I get if I'm sat here tomorrow and we see the massive scatter to, uh, continuing. Uh, and we see more weird <laughs> operational runs. It'd be pretty typical. Uh, we've had it all over the place the last week or so. Uh, but hopefully, things are starting to agree. But yeah, this evening still seeing a little bit of a discrepancy, but slowly starting to come to a solution. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.